What's up everybody, welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie. Today, the sun is out, my hair is a little frizzy, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, so I got asked a question um, on one of my YouTube videos. I can't remember which one now, but essentially it's asked me how I choose the ink and or pen that I'm gonna use since I have so many. And the, the short answer to that is I tend to match them with color. <laughs> uh, if I want to use a pen that happens to be brown, then I'll ch typically choose a brown uh, ink. Or if I want to use a blue ink, I will typically choose a pen that leans uh, more blue, vice versa kind of thing. So, I mean, that was a really quick and easy answer. So I didn't really want to do a video for that, but... I thought what might be neat is to show you some of my pen and ink combinations that falls within that category. Um, so if you've been watching my videos for quite some time, you know that I typically prefer warm tone uh, ink colors, warm tone pen colors. There's certainly the exceptions to that. Uh, do not get me wrong. Um, but that's usually where my first instinct is to go. So one of my favorite pens is the Pilot Custom 823, uh, obviously the amber color. <laughs> um, and I have actually right now, because it is currently inked up, I have my favorite ink, Mont Blanc James Purdy & Sons Single Malt. Uh, it's the only ink I've ever bought two bottles of um, because I'm about halfway through the first one and they don't make it anymore. So I'm very glad that I did end up picking up that second bottle, despite the fact that this ink is very expensive. <sighs> but it just smells so good. And the ink is a very like, it's more of an orange color, uh, but it leans very um, like brown. So it's like a, well, according to the bottom of the thing, it's a moron orange, <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's an orange with like brown undertones. So these t tend to be the two that I ink up most often uh, if I want that kind of experience. Um, two other pens that I ink up quite frequently with warm brown tone inks. Here comes the sun again and I just knocked the camera. Is this Aurora Optima? Um, this one, I cannot remember what it is called, uh, but it was a um, limited edition one. They don't make it anymore. I have number 96 out of 365. Um, this one has a 14 karat medium nib. It is one of the ones with the longer tines. Um, I really like it quite a bit. I bought this one secondhand um, because this one came out long before I knew anything about the Aurora Optima. And she's beautiful. Um, <laughs> I also have the Sailor Pro Gear. I've seen a couple different names for this. I've seen coffee. Uh, I've just seen brown. I've seen um, like coffee brown. I've seen mocha right now is, is the one that seems to be the most popular. This is a hard medium fine. I also bought this secondhand. Um, and then I had a friend tune it up because it came to me uh, horrifically scratchy and bent tines and everything. Um, other brown inks that I really like uh, is Diamine's Espiari Brown in an Ackermann bottle. <laughs> um, I really like that one. It's hard to get your hands on this, but if you can, I recommend it. Uh, I also like Lee Dete uh, if I want like a, like a truer brown. These are much more warmer tones. Lee Dete is much cooler tone. Um, but I have a whole bunch. And for the most part, I use a lot of samples. Um, so I'll get samples from random different brown tones. Um, but sometimes if I don't want a warmer tone and I want to go on the cooler side, uh, then I usually fall into the blue category. Some of my favorite blue pens that I own uh, is the Pilot Custom 74. Uh, this one right now smells like KWZ ink. So it has that mild uh, vanilla tone with the custom or con 70 uh, converter. Um, I love the smell of KWZ ink. Hmm. Um, 
This one, typically I will have inked up, uh, oddly enough, with a thing I don't have here, so please hold. There it is. Uh, usually I have inked up with Northern Twilight from Scriptus 2016. Uh, this is a very, very dark ink, uh, and this pen is very wet as well. Um, it's very dark blue. In fact, it looks almost black based on the bottle, uh, which I just got a little bit of ink. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy Q-tip and just clean up the cap while I'm talking to you all. Um, this one, yeah, super dark ink, uh, does sheen a little bit red uh, in the right circumstances. So if you have like a really good Tomoe River um, paper, then you'll really get that. As I mix this up, you'll see that like, that's a little bit more of that color there. So really, really great ink. Uh, I like it in the Custom 74 a lot because the Custom 74 does have a uh, very nice like bounce. It's almost like shock absorber uh, to the nib, which I like quite a bit. Um, ironically, the Custom 74, which is a smaller nib than the 823, has a little bit more of that uh, shock absorbing feeling, um, which I really, really adore. I do want to get the blue stone. I also want to get the um, turquoise one and the burgundy color one, and I can't remember what they're called, um, but I just can't reason buying three extra custom 74s when I already have one. Um, so maybe if they were to go on like a tremendous sale or something one day. Um, so Northern Twilight from Scriptus, uh, you can't really buy this anymore. Um, you might be able to pick one up secondhand, but blues that you can buy, um, that I'm obsessed with is <clears throat> Pilot Hiroshizuku Sukiyo. This is more of like a tealy blue black. Um, I use this one a lot in my custom 912, Pilot Custom 912, uh, with an ebonite feed and a falcon nib. Um, reviews of pretty much every pen I'm gonna talk about are in my channel if you wanna take a look, um, especially all of the um, modifications I've made to the Pilot Custom 912, though that's definitely there as well. Um, a pen that I don't ink up super often, but does fall into the blue category uh, is another Aurora. Uh, also one of the 365 ones. Um, this one, it's really hard to get in the lighting here, but it's the blue flecked one. I have number 312 out of 365. And the reason why I don't ink this one up super, super often, yeah, it's not going to focus, uh, is because it's a stub nib. So it's a 1.1, 18 karat. I don't write with a 1.1 very often, um, but I think that this one will be the next one I probably do ink up. Uh, reason being is because um, I'm using blank Tomoe River paper in my journal um, so I can have a little bit more room to party. Um, another blue ink that I really like that you still also can buy is the Lamy Turquoise. Um, this ink is basically my favorite turquoise. Uh, if you, again, in the right circumstances, so on Tomoe River paper with a really, really wet writer, uh, you can get some red sheen out of this ink. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm about halfway done the bottle. Um, this was one of the earliest inks that I purchased. The very first two full bottles of ink I ever purchased was actually um, Pilot Iroshizuku, um Kanpeki and Yamabudo um, because basically at that point in my career <laughs> uh, the only pen videos I watched were Brian Goulet's uh, and he was talking about those two a lot. So I bought them. I also bought Noodler's Black and Noodler's Blue. Uh, I have since gone through all of those inks. Uh, I've never repurchased any of them. I did end up getting a sample of Pilot Iroshizuku Kanpeki because I wanted to try it again but I didn't want to have to buy a whole new bottle. Um, but I do prefer the color of the Lamy Turquoise and I do prefer the Sukiyo. Um, so those are like kind of like the two spectrum, two ends for me. There are of course many, many other inks that I do use along those color lines. These are just kind of 
suggestions, uh, ones I've been using lately. Um, and then I have sort of like the, the random ones because right now if I want a warm tone, I have warm tone inks, warm tone pens, cool tone, I have cool tone inks, cool tone pens. Um, but I do have some ink colors like this Caveco uh, Palm Green, I think it's what it's called. This is the old bottle. They are now in um, like square chunk bottles um, in 50 mils, I believe. This is the old 30 mils. This is lasting me forever because I really only ever ink up about one converter worth <laughs> per year and it's usually around the holidays. Um, but I don't really have any pens that fit that. I don't own any green pens. I don't plan on buying any green pens. Um, this is a very nice green color. Uh, and again, it can get some red sheen, but you really, 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 really got to push it. Uh, then I also have um, the Birmingham Pen Company Chrysanthemum, which is sort of like a greeny, dusty purple. I can't really tell there. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? Uh, my cat's in her litter box. Um, yeah, it's like a greeny, dusty purple. Such a strange color to try and tell somebody what it looks like um but I have a few like you know pens that I typically use for ink colors uh that are random so I don't have any green pens I don't have any like dusty pinkish greenish kind of things so for those I usually stick with my Lamy 2000 the original in Macrolon this one has a medium nib uh, Piston Fill, one of my favorite pens, uh, will pretty much always be in my collection. So much so that I actually bought the blue and the brown <laughs> uh, inks. Uh, no, but not inks. Pens. Um, I also bought another custom 823 in the smoke body. Uh, I got this one with the fine nib since the brown one has a medium nib. Um, so really like that. Um... I do also have, but don't use as often, the Pelican M805 in the gray Streisman. I do have some gray ink um, that I put in here. I have the Mont Blanc uh, Spider, like Heritage Spider one. Um, and any gray samples that I get, uh, typically I will put in here as well. Um, I don't use this one as often because even though it's a fine nib, it writes <laughs> basically like a broad. Um, and I do prefer nib widths that are a little bit skinnier. Um, but I use those monotone pen colors, uh, like blacks and, and grays. Um, my custom 912, um, that's black with gray trim is not physically with me. It's in a different room of the house. <laughs> um, but I use that, like I said, more often than not, it's inked up with, um, the Pilot Iroshizuku Sukiyo, but I do also use some random ink in that as well. Um, and I do currently have a black sailor, matte black sailor, um, that is in another room as well, um, that I just did a review of not too long ago. It was the partnership with uh, Wancher. Um, that one is going to be perfect for those random little uh, ink mixture type thingies. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I do have some red pens. Sometimes I will do, uh, you know, red inks with, like I have Mont Blanc, William Shakespeare, um, that I will usually put either in my Aurora Optima Burgundy, um, or this Mont Blanc, um, J oh shoot, what is that? <laughs> Le Petit Prince. Um, this one has a fine nib. Um, so if I have a red, I usually put them in there. The only time that I really break my rule and cross, cross contaminate um, <laughs> my color tones is with the platinum 3776, century 3776, um, because the only ink that I ever tend to put in this is Deatramentis Cola, which I do have right here. Nope, that's tobacco. If you want to see what I keep reaching into, um, check out a video I did not too long ago uh, on my fountain pen storage. Um, so this is a red ink. It's a ready brown ink. Um, 
Smells like alcoholic cola. Um, and I don't know why. I think because when I got the two together, I put them together and they've just been the same ever since. Um, so that really is the only combination uh, of a cool pen with like a warm toned ink that I kind of blow everything else out of the water for. <laughs> um, so when, like I said, the original question was how do I choose what I want to ink up since I have so many things. Usually I have an ink that I feel like using that determines the pen or I have a pen that I feel like using that then determines the ink. So yeah, that's that's how I do what I do. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. A, do you bother color matching at all? Do you even care about it? Uh, and B, um, when you choose to ink up a pen and ink uh, combo, do you put a lot of thought into it? Do you, you know, purposefully like me go, okay, I want to use this Sailor Mocha. So I'm going to put a SBRE Brown in it. Um, cause that's a really good combo. Or do you just feel like using a random pen and a random ink? Let me know. Let everybody else know in the comment section down below. Hit that like button if you liked it. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. New videos come out every Monday and Friday. Uh, and then my book series on Tuesdays. Um, and if you're still watching almost 18 minutes in, you are the reason I make these videos. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.